here. Um, we would love to know who's with us today, your organization, um, your city, state, um, and this summer has, it's been a hot one, right? So we would love just to know more about, um, you know, what has been, what has brought you joy over this summer. Again, thank you all for joining us for the Innovative Practices Resource Roundup with the National Community Action Partnership. I am Lily Seals. I am the Director of Practice Transformation. Uh, you joining me today, um, my two esteemed colleagues, Karis Manus, who is the Senior Associate for Learning and Dissemination, and Jennifer Gregory, who is the Director of Mobility, Learning, Design, and Practice. We start our time together with uh, a land acknowledgement. So we say every community owes its existence and vitality to generations from around the world who contributed their hopes, dreams, and energy to making the history that led to this moment. Some were brought here against their will. Some were drawn to leave their distant homes in hope of a better life. And some have lived on this land for more generations than can be counted. Truth and acknowledgement are critical to building mutual respect and connection across all barriers of heritage and difference. Again, I'm Lily Seals and I am in Charleston, South Carolina. So this meeting is being held on the traditional lands of the Cuso people, and I pay my respect to elders, both past and present, who have stewarded this land throughout the generations. And we'll make sure that we put place a link in the chat for you all. Um, if you have not joined us before, or if you have not um, learned the lands that you are residing or uh, working on. We also start our time together with the promise of community action. Community action changes people's lives, embodies the spirit of hope, improves communities, and makes America a better place to live. We care about the entire community and we are dedicated to helping people help themselves and each other. So our agenda for today, of course we have our welcome and introductions. We have, um, great resources that we want to share with you all today. We have our systems change toolkit. Uh, we have our whole family approach tools and resources, our vaccine equity toolkit, and then we'll talk about some additional resources and upcoming learning opportunities. Um, and before I hand off to my colleagues to walk you through uh, our many resources, just a reminder that at Community Action, we do focus on right the causes and conditions of poverty. So as we think about what it takes to advance social and economic mobility for families and community action, our history is, is right in innovation and really looking at what is going on, what is happening in our communities and how we are resourcing certainly our agencies, our families and our community partners um, so that all families can thrive. And we hope that as you look at these tools and learn about these tools and review these tools, that it really becomes um, a, 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 a wonderful tool um, in your tool belt um, really to advance forward. So without further ado, I'm going to hand off to my colleague, Karis Manis. Thank you, Lily. Um, so I'm excited to share with you all a new toolkit that we have available that is on um, building place-based opportunity ecosystems to advance social and economic mobility. And this toolkit is intended to be a roadmap for community action agencies and their partners to use as a guide in supporting the work of engaging in systems change. So we know that in community action, as we're working to address the causes and the conditions of poverty, we know that systems change is essential. The barriers and the challenges that the families we serve encounter each day are held in place by complex and interconnecting systems of policies and practices. Um, and so that are attached to historic and structural racism and addressing these systemic challenges requires intentional and comprehensive solutions that are centered in equity. 
And so when we talk about systems change, we're talking about changing narratives and shifting power dynamics. And it's about, um, it takes time, it takes trust to build relationships. Um, and it's it's really, it's a it's a challenging process. And so we have this toolkit to help guide you through that. And so a little bit of a background, um, in 2021, NCAP partnered with the Kresge Foundation to establish a community of practice for agencies who are working to address systems level issues in their communities. And the six teams that participated in this community of practice were working to address issues um, like implementing a community level whole family approach on um, increasing access to services for speakers of indigenous languages, of building um, community level trauma informed approach to eliminating adverse childhood experiences, working within educational systems and criminal legal systems. Um, and so over the past three years, as they've been in this learning community together and learning from one another, um, we've compiled the learnings that they've, that they've learned along the way, those lessons that they've learned and that helped to develop this toolkit. So as we walk through this toolkit today, this is what you'll see is some of the things that have helped them in their journey and lessons that they've learned um, as they've gone through this process together. And one thing that we did want to, to make clear about this toolkit too is that it's not intended to be used as an individual, but we really want you to use it as a team. So within your agency and with other cross-sector human service partners, the toolkit outlines the successful, the components of successful systems change approaches, and it can be used to help support that design, the implementation, and the sustainability of those approaches as you work to transform your local human services ecosystem. And it is intended to be a living, breathing document that you can revisit um, time and time again as you need to, um, as you and your team work to ideate and work through those components of lasting and effective systems change. So we have a QR code here that you can scan to access the toolkit. We'll share it for you in the chat and we'll, you'll receive it in the follow-up from today's webinar as well. But we just wanted to kind of walk through today some of the components that you'll see in this toolkit. And it is divided into two main sections. So we have part one that's really focused on knowledge building. And then part two is where we get into the designing um, your plan of action. And so the knowledge building section provides content for a foundational understanding of what systems change is and how you can build the capacity of your team to work towards systems change. So it includes components like social and economic mobility, racial equity, the conditions of systems change, collective impact, um, content and context experts, and the human services value curve. And we'll look at each of those components a little bit closer as we go through today as well. And you'll see here on this slide that for each of these components, we include a, a quote, a brief description of that topic, and then a graphic to help give that visual um, learning component as well. You'll also, for each component, you will have a resource guide to help um, provide any links to resources that can help strengthen and deepen your team's understanding of the topic. The resource guide has um, written resources, podcasts, webinars, um, activities, and worksheets that you can go through together as a team. And then after the resource guide, we also include a worksheet. And the worksheet is where you have the opportunity to exercise that knowledge that you've learned a little and see where you might could apply any of the insights that you've gained in the learning um, to the work that you're doing. So we do encourage you with this to divide up the resources amongst your team um, and then come back together and discuss. So one of the first components that we have in the knowledge building section is social and economic mobility. In this section, it starts with understanding that mobility is a three-part definition, that in addition to economic success, it also includes being valued in community and power and autonomy. Um, and so in this section, we provide five different frameworks for social and economic mobility. 
And we hope that as your you and your team are going through this, that you can identify which framework best aligns with your mission and your vision, and you can use that as your guide um, in your systems change work. Advancing racial equity is another component that's included in here. And as you see in this, this graphic, we know that uh, the work of systems change goes beyond equality. It's centered in equity, where each person receives the level of support that they need. And ultimately, we're working towards that, um, that final vision of, of liberation, where there's no barriers at all. Next, we have the conditions of systems change. So to change systems, you really need to understand what are the conditions of systems change. And you'll see here that at that ex explicit structural level of systems change, there are policies and practices and resource flows that need to change. But below the surface, there are also relational changes that are needed. Um, there are relationships and connections and power dynamics that are holding those policies and practices and resource flows in place. And then at an even deeper level, there are mental models that need to change. So this is where the implicit transformative change happens. This is where narrative change, which is a big part of what the agencies that are working towards systems change are focused on. Um, so this really helps to, to ground the work that you're doing in systems change. The other component that we have in the knowledge building section is collective impact. And the collective impact approach is a collaborative and structured framework that brings together cross-sector partners to address complex systems level issues. And there are five conditions of a collective impact approach. It includes having a common agenda, so you're all working towards the same goal. You have a um, shared measurement system. You have mutually reinforcing ideas. You're in continuous communication with one another. And you have a backbone organization that's, helped lead, that's leading the effort. And then as you see in this graphic here, there are um, the components of success in a collective impact approach. It includes governance and infrastructure. It includes strategic planning, um, community engagement, and then evaluation and improvement. And these efforts transpire, these components of success um, transpire over five phases. So the phases you are looking at assessing readiness, um, initiating impact, organizing for impact, beginning the work of implementation, and then sustaining that impact as you move forward. The next component of learning that we have is related to content and context experts. And we have a, an article here that we share um, in the toolkit to really understand um, this very important component. And that's that content experts are the professionals. These are the staff in your organization, the service providers, the leaders with formal power who have knowledge and tools and resources to address the issue. But you also have context experts. These are the people with lived experience of the situation. It includes the children and the youth that you're serving. These are the people who experientially know about the issue that you're working to address. And so for systems change to be effective, it needs to include the authentic engagement of people with lived experience. And then the final learning component that we have um, in the knowledge building section is the human services value curve. And this, the human services value curve is a framework of change that was developed to help human service leaders improve outcomes for individuals, families, and communities. And there are several community action leaders who have found this to be a helpful tool when working to shift their organizations to focus on social and economic mobility outcomes and to launch systems change initiatives. So those are the components of the, the knowledge building. And then in the second part of this toolkit, it, we will look at the design plan. And the design plan is to help guide your team through the planning process. So each component of the design plan provides a worksheet with questions to help your team identify 
the needs, the resources, and the next steps to develop a clear plan of action for achieving those intended outcomes. So in this section, you'll see um, worksheets for establishing the team, determining who it is that needs to be at the table, what their role will be in this work, what their area of expertise or sphere of influence is, and then doing an initial team scan to look at those components of collective impact, looking at the governance and the infrastructure, the strategic planning, the community engagement, um, and those that's gonna help you develop your action plan. And then the action plan, of course, is where you start identifying those specific steps that you're going to take. Who's gonna re be responsible for completing the task, what your targeted completion date is, and what resources you may need to help support you in that work. And then we also look at developing a theory of change, developing a logic model, and evaluation and improvement. So how is it that you're going to plan to evaluate what worked, what didn't work, what necessary improvements do you need to make to build momentum and to keep um, sustaining the work? And with that, in the appendix of the toolkit, we include um, both a template and a sample of a theory of change and a logic model. And so here you'll see a, um, an example of the template um, theory of change. And this is where you pull all the pieces together and paint that big picture of how and why your initiative is going to achieve its intended outcomes. And then the logic model, um, here you'll see one of the examples of a logic model that's included in the, the appendix of the toolkit. And this is where you're gonna go deeper into the details to really outline your short-term, your immediate and your long-term outcomes, your strategies and activities, um, what inputs are going to be needed to help you implement those strategies and activities. And as you'll see in this example, um, the logic model expands over five years um, and it can, can be longer if needed, but that's because we know that, that shifting and transforming systems takes time. And so our hope is that this will be your, um, your guide as you're working through this. It can be something that you can refer back to as you needed um, to help you stay on the right path in this work and to um, help you adjust as needed when different changes or obstacles may come up that you can refer back to this and adjust it as you need to to keep moving forward. So again, here is the, the QR code um, and you have the, the link to access this toolkit, but we just wanted to give you a high level picture of some of the, the resources that you can find here and hope that this can be something that will help you and your team and your community partners if, as you are working to advance systems change. Um, and now I'm going to hand it over to Jennifer to walk through our whole family approach resources. Thank you, Karis. I am delighted uh, to join this afternoon's webinar to share more about our whole family approach. Um, for those of you who this may be um, an unfamiliar term, you're, you've not yet heard of whole family approach, perhaps you've heard it referred to as two gen or two generational uh, approaches. Um, I'll give you a little bit of foundational context for what a whole family approach is. There are many definitions um, of the term, but essentially it all boils down to a whole family approach is a framework whereby we um, endeavor to serve the entire family or the whole household, parents and children or children and the, the adults in their lives simultaneously in such a way um, that we provide interventions and services of the sufficient duration, dosage and intensity to promote social and economic mobility. And as you heard Lily mention at the top of today's webinar, that is the North Star of community action truly is social and economic mobility. Um, the mission of community action is not, nor has it ever been, to make living in poverty more bearable. It is in fact, um, in our foundational documents, our mission is the complete and total eradication of poverty and um, to mitigate the impact and the conditions of poverty in the meantime. And whole family approach is a framework whereby we are able to do this. Next slide, please. And we can skip one more. And so if you're like, 
yes, I've heard of whole family, I've heard of two gin, or what you're saying now sounds um, like something that we want to do, because we want to increase our impact, we really um, want to see long lasting transformational change in the families that we're working with, we want to move beyond transactions in working with families. But one, it sounds like a whole lot of work. And two, we're not even sure where to get started. Don't worry, we've got you covered. In the Whole Family Approach Design Plan, which is very similar to uh, the Ecosystems Change Toolkit, it is a step-by-step -step plan to take your organization from ideation to implementation, even onto evaluation of your whole family approach. In the design plan, you'll have an opportunity to do some journey mapping, identifying potential partners, both within and outside of your organization, and moving even into piloting, piloting or testing your theory of change. And then I mentioned that you also have an opportunity to have a step-by-step -step guide to creating your theory of change and logic models. And that's logic models plural, because in a whole family approach, we wanna see a logic model for the parents or caregivers, the children in the home, as well as the community at large. And again, if that sounds like it's a lot, fear not, because the whole family approach design plan has simplified it into a step-by-step -step process that walks you through each one of these phases again, from ideation to implementation to evaluation of your whole family approach. Likewise, and similarly, we have the whole family approach building blocks resource guide. Next slide, please. So we've heard it said in community action that if you've seen one community action agency, you've seen one community action agency because we are all unique and different in a variety of ways. And that's how we were designed to be in response to the needs and the challenges and opportunities of the communities we serve. The same can be said of a whole family approach. If you've seen one agency's whole family approach, then you've seen one agency's whole family approach. However, there are some commonalities among whole family approaches. And there are some foundational building blocks, the eight that you see on your screen here, that over our tenure, over a decade of working with organizations to, to design and implement a whole family approach have found to be critical to the long-term success of this framework within a community. And so in the whole family approach building blocks resource guide, you have an opportunity to delve into a variety and a wealth of resources for each one of these building blocks to help you both assess where your organization is now and also to help you build your muscle in the particular areas where you may need some extra support support. And here's a little sneak peek for those of you who are on today's webinar. Next month, NCAP will be dropping um, live on our website and in our e-newsletter, our weekly e-newsletter, the brand new whole family approach um, readiness assessment. So if you are ready to embark on a whole family approach in your organization, and again, you're not sure where to get started, or you're unsure where you stand as an organization as it relates to these building blocks, the whole family approach assessment is not a pass fail. It is to help you assess where you are in terms of these building blocks and other foundational components that are indicative of future success for whole family approach. And then where you need to apply some energy and time and resources into building your foundation for whole family approach. Next slide, please. And there are great examples. Again, as I said, uh, NCAP has been working well over a decade in supporting community action agencies and other community-based organizations across the country in implementing the whole family approach. Our friends at Ascend at the Aspen Institute also have a wealth of resources on their website. Um, so we encourage you, if you are interested in uh, pursuing a whole family approach, that you visit the Ascend website and dig into their resources. We also will share with you in the chat a link to a wonderful case study from Metro Action Commission, a public community action agency in Nashville, Tennessee. And this report chronicles their journey, again, from ideation to implementation to evaluation of their whole family approach, and really tells the story of the impact and the success that they've been able to realize in the Nashville community after having deployed a whole family approach to their work. Next slide, please. 
and yet more examples uh, lie on our website in these whole family approach design briefs. You'll find five community action agencies, again, across the country in a variety of geographical areas in diverse communities who have embraced the whole family approach and who have modified it to fit their community and their agency structure, who have really um, customized whole family approach. And you'll get to see a little bit more about their journey, their learnings, and the results that they are realizing um, after having embraced the whole family approach. Next slide, please. And again, if the idea of a whole family approach or a two-gen approach is new, or uh, you're revisiting it now after some time, we strongly encourage you to check out this foundational webinar series for whole family approach. It goes through the foundational concepts, what whole family approach is, what it is not, um, how whole family approach is similar to what we see in Head Start, but different from Head Start. Um, and then how do we move from understanding whole family approach to implementing whole family approach? That uh, whole family approach 201 webinar takes you through a little more in depth um, uh, discovery of the whole family approach design plan and the building blocks resource guide. And then finally, you may be asking, okay, this is great, but then how do we pay for all of this? Um, Whole Family Approach 301 offers an example from a Roosevelt County Action Program in Presque Isle, Maine, of how they have done a masterful job of blending and braiding resources to sustain their whole family approach work and how you might be able to apply some of those same tactics to uh, funding your own whole family approach. Next slide, please. And because one of the chief hallmarks of whole family approach is centering family and developing family as leaders, um, both within the organization and within their communities and acknowledging that families are the experts in their own lives and allowing them to really take the driver's seat while our staff or coaches or navigators work alongside families to realize their ultimate goals, to help them realize social and economic mobility. Uh, we have available through Community Action Academy, um, two phenomenal free resources, um, Family Centered Coaching 101 and 201. Again, these are free through the Community Action Academy for network members and your partners. And I think it's important to mention and for your partners because many organizations have found that it's beneficial as they're building out their design for their whole family approach implementation that they engage partners from within their community that are outside of their organization to bring in a, a different lens or, or thought into the design and implementation process. And should you decide to go that route and bring in external partners, you want them to have the same foundational knowledge that you have. So we encourage you to share these open source resources with your community partners. And again, um, these e-courses are one of the many resources available to you through NCAP and our website. Next slide, please. And just to make it easier, we put all of these resources together on a single web page on the NCAP website. You can scan the QR code here or we'll drop a link into the chat. Or if you visit Community Action Partnership online, um, you can go into the search bar and type in whole family approach and it will lead you to the whole family approach page where you can scroll up and down to find a wealth of resources. Webinars are available at the very bottom of that page. Also encourage you to check out the Community Action Partnerships YouTube page, our YouTube channel rather, where our previously recorded webinars are archived and you can go back in time to see a more in-depth discussion of each of those whole family approach building blocks, as well as discussion with um, other organizations and agencies who have implemented whole family approach. We talk more about blending and braiding resources. So there is uh, no shortage of resources available to you, again, between NCAP's website and our YouTube channel. And of course, we always welcome you to reach out to us with questions or um, assistance with guiding you through these resources. With that, I will hand off to my colleague, Lily, to take us to our next resource. All right, um, so next we're going to be looking at um, our vaccine equity toolkit. 
And so a little background on this toolkit. Um, for the past two years, NCAP has been working in collaboration with the Association of State and Territorial Health Officials and Gramercy Research Group to facilitate a learning community group of five community action agencies who are working to reduce disparities in vaccination rates among racial and ethnic communities. And this is part of a larger Partnering for Vaccine Equity program that was launched by the Center for Disease Control in 2020. And the learnings from these agencies have been compiled into a toolkit. Um, the toolkit is called Championing Change. It's a toolkit for addressing vaccine equity through community mobilization. And again, we have a QR code here that you can scan to access. And again, we'll share it in the chat and you'll receive it in the follow-up from today's webinar as well. So lots of different ways to, to access the resources we're sharing with you today. When you access this toolkit, you'll be able to learn more about the project and you'll learn more about each of the agencies that are participating um, in the project. And it was largely focused, it has been largely focused on addressing systemic disparities and on prioritizing community-centered outreach. And again, there are, the agencies that are participating are, are all throughout the country. Um, we have agencies participating in California, Arkansas, um, Alabama, Georgia, and South Carolina. And we know um, in this project, the COVID-19 pandemic really shed light own um, disproportionate um, health outcomes and mortality rates with Black, Indigenous, and people of color, um, and disparities within rural communities um, that were driven by the social determinants of health and access to quality health care. So these agencies through this project have been working to address these disparities by really prioritizing that community-centered outreach and building collective a collective team of partners um, across the healthcare community um, with faith-based organizations, um, schools, other nonprofits, and with the, the members of their community. And in the toolkit, you'll be able to see the different areas where the teams developed strategies. Um, so you'll see those strategy areas were environmental, they were community and clinical, um, they were interpersonal, and they were individual. And so that inter environmental um, is looking at the social and the cultural norms. The community or the clinical is looking at within the schools, within the neighborhoods. Um, interpersonal, looking at the relationships between neighbors and colleagues and healthcare providers. And then the individual is looking at addressing um, those attitudes and beliefs, um, personal attitudes and beliefs and behaviors. And within um, each of these strategy areas, some of the strategies um, that these teams used and, and found effective um, were partnerships with both healthcare and with public health, um, strategy of meeting people where they are with fact-based messaging. And so you'll see here some of the social media posts that were um, shared. There were videos that were shared and um, community events that were held to make sure that the community was receiving accurate information and that they were going out into the community and meeting them meeting them where they were. Um, leveraging existing programs and partnerships to expand reach. And so um, looking at the, the Head Start program, um, at back to school events and community resource fairs um, that were already going on, being able to also include um, vaccines at those types of events and also leveraging with employment services and housing services and all of the different programs and services that community action agencies were already doing, being able to um, implement um, vaccines into those, as, those programs and partnerships as well. Empowering culturally competent community partners was another one of the strategies. Um, so one of the community action agencies that was a part of this project um, subcontracted with partners who already had strong relationships within the target populations that they were looking to serve. Um, so looking at um, the Native American community and Hispanic communities and being able to um, empower those within that community um, 
to, to do this work and looking at the location of where clinics were held, where the community was at, looking at the language and being able to make sure that the information that was being shared was in the language that could be understood by that community um, in Spanish or in the um, California, looking at the indigenous Mosteco language. Um, so making sure that those services were, were um, empowering culturally competent community partners um, in the work. And then the other strategy was identifying and engaging trusted messengers. And um, one of the agencies really focused on um, their faith-based partnerships um, and how they could use um, faith leaders and um, to really um, build trust with the community, be able to communicate the message in a way that the community was, was trusting of the, what was being shared with them. And so within each of these strategies, you'll see in the toolkit that it's accompanied by a case study of a specific example of how this agency used this strategy um, and implemented it within their local context um, to achieve the, the intended outcomes. And across all of these strategies, there were key themes that emerged. Um, so the key themes were partnerships, the power of partnerships, um, the relevance of the social determinants of health, and the importance of having sustainable um, and flexible funding to drive this work forward. You'll also see in this toolkit that there, in this project, um, there was an advisory committee of other national partners um, and resources from, from each of these um, advisory organizations are also included in the toolkit. So you'll see resources from the National Association um, of State Offices of Minority Health, the National Association of Emergency Medical Technicians, the National Association of Community Health Workers, the Association of American Indian Physicians, the National Medical Association, the New York Academy of Medicine's Center for Healthy Aging, National Hispanic Medical Association, Faith for Vaccines and Pacific Island Health Officers Association are some of the other resources that you'll be able to, to access here. And some additional tools and resources um, are also included um, to help with the cross-sector partnerships, um, culturally relevant outreach, um, working with older adults and people living with disabilities, and community-based resources. And we, there's also included in this toolkit some sample materials. So as I mentioned earlier, some of the promotional videos or media releases or um, tools that were used by these teams, um, you can be able to access and see examples that you might be able to um, utilize in your local community as well. So again, we have the, the QR code here that you can, can scan to access this tool. Um, you'll have the link in the chat and in the follow-up today as well. Um, but we hope that this will be um, a helpful tool that you can pull out um, things that may be helpful um, to use in your, in your local community. And with that, I will hand it um, back over to Lily to close us out today. Thank you, Karis, and thank you, Jennifer. Um, we're going to talk about additional resources and upcoming learning opportunities. Um, but before we jump into that, would love for you to um, also uh, evaluate us. So um, what have you learned today? Um, you know, was it helpful? What would you like to hear more from? Because this, what we do is for, of, and by the network. So if there, um, if you heard of content, if you're like, man, I really enjoyed that, that uh, systems change toolkit, or I'd love to know more about the whole family approach, um, building blocks, and uh, to, be, to, to know what opportunities exist there. Um, we want to hear all of that. So we we strongly encourage you to um, please complete, it's brief, it's brief, uh, to complete the evaluation um, for us. So we know how we're doing so that we can, again, bring more great content and resources um, to you all. All right, so there's this little thing called annual convention that's coming up in Seattle um, in August, which is, next. can you believe next month? Um, tomorrow is August 1st. So in Seattle, um, we will be celebrating uh, community action, right? We'll be selling our, celebrating our 60th anniversary. And we have um, a lot, or just a huge variety of um, sessions on various topics 
but certainly on everything that you've heard or seen today as it relates to systems change, as it relates to whole family approach, all of that really is baked into um, our agenda. So we certainly hope to see you there in Seattle um, and it's not too late to, uh, to register. So we will definitely have sessions here at annual convention. You have uh, Jennifer, uh, shared with you all about um, a webinar series, kind of in that kind of that foundational piece of learning more about whole family approach. Um, and we also have um, another webinar series. So there are two more in this series, but you can go back and watch the one from, uh, from July, but apply brain and behavioral science for families. If you have been on a webinar with New Moms, or if you have not, it is not to be missed. We're talking about executive skills 101, um, environmental modifications to reduce friction, um, in whole family work and harnessing executive skills for goal achievement, all of what we do within our work. So we strongly, again, encourage you to sign up for that. It is, um, it is a don't, it is a not miss, certainly in my top five of all of our webinars. So strongly encourage you all to join that. We also have Fresh Finds. Fresh Finds is, um, we know that you all are busy doing the work, right? You're working directly with families. So we um, really try to um, curate um, the latest resources, webinars, and funding opportunities from other organizations that are also really, you know, complementing the work that we do. So Fresh Finds is a place, kind of your one-stop shop. Um, certainly when you have a moment to say, you know, what's going on, or if you want to learn something uh, uh, new about certain latest, re what are the latest resources in a particular topic, what webinars exist, because you want to, you know, go deeper, whether it's with your team or with your community partners. So Fresh Finds is available for you there. You heard a little bit about Community Action Academy. So this is, uh, we have a new platform. We're very excited about it. Um, so we believe that it is certainly it is beautiful and user friendly, uh, but we are looking at certainly having really good content there. You saw the whole family approach courses. Uh, we have a, a course, um, I believe, on, on Snap ENT, um, and we're coming out with more courses all the time. So if you have not, please sign up for Community Action Academy and certainly check back um, on that. There are lots of free courses, free, 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 free. Um, free courses for you and for your team. So it's certainly also a, an opportunity for professional development that is of at no cost, right, to community action agencies. So certainly wanting to share that with you all. And just a final thank you all so much for joining us today to learn about the resources. Um, we, again, please, please complete our evaluation. Let us know what you learned. Let us know what was helpful, helpful to you and what you'd like to see more of. Um, I am Lily Seals, and I want to give a huge thank you to my colleagues, Harris Manus and Jennifer Gregory, for reviewing our innovative resources with the network, because it is certainly for you. Um, we appreciate you, and we look forward to seeing you next time. So have a great rest of the week, um, and we will see you soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.